this tricky topic discusses the phases of prenatal development as well as how teratogens can interfere with these phases, producing lifelong effects. By the time a baby is born, the amount of growth and development it's already gone through in the womb is incredible. Although babies first enter the visible world when they're born, their journey of growth begins well before they first open their eyes. We begin with a single cell forming an organism that undergoes extreme growth and maturation in the mother's womb to form the baby we see at birth, which is comprised of billions to trillions of cells. It's the stages of development before the baby's actually born that we're going to focus on for this tricky topic. This process is referred to as prenatal development. Prenatal development can be broken down into three major stages. The first is the germinal stage which lasts from conception to about two weeks post-conception. This is followed by the embryonic stage, which lasts from two weeks to eight weeks post-conception. And then finally, the fetal stage, which lasts from about eight weeks post-conception to birth. The germinal stage begins when the eggs are released from the ovary, entering and moving down the fallopian tube within the potential prospective mother. Subsequently, during intercourse, sperm cells swim up the fallopian tube to meet the eggs. While many sperm cells surround the egg, only one will succeed in penetrating it, a process known as fertilization. It's at this point that the sperm and egg come together to form a zygote. The zygote then continues down the fallopian tube while going through many subsequent cell divisions, growing in both size and density. At approximately four to five days, the zygote has formed into a blastocyst that enters the uterus. Following this, at about 11 to 12 days, the blastocyst implants into the uterine wall, and this is a critical stage where about 30 to 50% fail to properly plant, and therefore the pregnancy ends. However, when this is successful and the blastocyst implants into the uterine wall, it sets up the next stage of embryonic development. And this being the embryonic stage. So once a blastocyst implants into the uterine wall, the embryonic stage begins. At this point, the growing bundle is termed an embryo. In particular, this stage is marked by the formation of major organs, including the nervous system, the heart, eyes, ears, arms, legs, teeth, palate, and external genitalia. The embryonic stage lasts until about eight weeks after conception, where it then leads into the fetal stage. The fetal stage is marked by the formation of bone cells, in addition, at this point, major organs have already formed. For example, the heartbeat can first be detected at around eight weeks. So from here until birth, organs continue to grow and mature, producing a rapid growth in the embryo size. So now that we've briefly gone through the stages of prenatal development, there's a very important concept that we need to address. That being that the environment is extremely important because it has great influence on fetal development. During prenatal development, the fetus is completely dependent on the environment of the mother's womb, and the factors within the mother's womb come from many different sources, including what the mother eats, drinks, smokes, feels, and experiences, and it's the collection of these factors forming the environment of the womb that governs the fetus's development. This is referred to as prenatal programming. And prenatal programming is the process by which the events in the womb alter the development of the physical and psychological health for both the newborn baby as well as the subsequent adult. With respect to negative effects, damage can be caused either by a lack of factors necessary for proper development or by the introduction of factors that actively interfere with proper development. And this brings us to teratogens. These are substances and chemicals that come from the external environment and have a negative impact on fetal and infant development. The severity of the effects of teratogens is time dependent. For example, certain teratogens have a greater effect when consumed at a specific period of prenatal development. In general, the earlier the exposure to a teratogen during a pregnancy, the greater the effect. Several substances are known teratogens, including nicotine, caffeine, alcohol, and some prescription drugs, just to name a few. These have all been shown to have negative effects on prenatal development. That concludes our tricky topic on the phases of prenatal development and how the environment can affect these phases. Thank you for listening.